Hey, Reef Builders, welcome to Reef Therapy episode number 77. Today, we'll have a little vent sash. We'll talk about some aquascaping technique and get some of your comments toward the end of the episode. Uh, back to the standard crew. What's up, Raj? Mark, what are we drinking tonight? What do you got, Raj? I have got good old H2O in my Falcon's glass because, you know, I'm glutton for punishment with these... Atlanta Falcons of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what do you got? Uh, Heineken. Very boring. Very usual. We had a bunch of people come over, and uh, I have Coors tonight. This is yeah. in an old radio station that has failed uh, in St. Louis called Brew 100.3. BrewStLouis.com. Yeah. They played like... Uh, like alternative music and I say alternative, but it wasn't really alternative. It was like goo goo dolls and things like that. So, uh, more of like a light rock, I guess, but yeah, they failed. So, uh, but they <laughs> went over the radio station fails. You get new glassware. So <laughs> it's always fun. Um, but before we get into anything tonight, I do want to say that uh, we are going to do a live version of the podcast at Reefstock Chattanooga. This is probably the first time that Mark's hearing this. You're good, yeah. right? Okay, cool. <laughs> he's, he's all good. He's good to go. Um, we'd love to have some special guests. So if you feel like you m may have some expertise in something, maybe it's a certain category of the hobby like disaster preparedness or pest control or farming, or you've just got a an awesome system, let us know in the comments. Hit us up on the socials because we'd love to have you out, especially if you're coming to Chattanooga already to come to Reefstock. We'd love to have you as a part of the podcast. So uh, that might be fun for somebody. That might be that might instill a lot of fear in somebody. You know, you never know. <laughs> I think it'll be cool. And yeah, it'll be cool to have some different guests on there. And I don't know. I mean, as a listener, it would be cool just to join in and put your mark on it and. Um, yeah, especially in a live setting in a show out in Chattanooga. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I think a well, lot as of long people... as you guys manage the audio this time, cause we did it at the aquatic expo and we had like, we, I think we spent like 30 minutes trying to get everything working and yeah. it was pretty painful. Yeah. There there's like people special. sitting, watching and waiting. You're like, just one second. <laughs> there will be some <laughs> troubleshooting. There's no doubt. I, I have no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, it should be fun. I feel like it, a lot of times people will sit down on the radio. We'll have, you know, everyday average citizens in, you know, doing some sort of charitable work and they're always so nervous, but it's just like, yeah, we're just having a conversation. There just happens to be microphones in front of us. So if you've got something you think to, that you could offer the conversation, please let us know, reach out in the uh, comment section or on the socials. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, Reefstock Chattanooga, right around the corner, reefstock.show for those tickets. Raj, I want to start with you tonight. What happened in your life just 24 hours ago? Because <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it's, and why you're drinking water tonight. <laughs> and why am I drinking water, right? <laughs> that we had a, an intense night. Um, so we had huge, huge lightning storms. And we've been having thunderstorms lately, but this one was something else. And... I remember on my drive home seeing some of that lightning and it was it was that type where you get multiple strikes kind of spiraling out through the sky and just a really cool looking display. It's really cool unless you get hit. And so last night um, we got hit and I know it, it, it had hit multiple points in the neighborhood and it felt like my house had just gotten hit by a big truck. It was super, super loud. Um, just a big bolt of energy. Uh, but the whole house shook. It rumbled and it knocked a light fixture off and it came straight down. And it had one of those glass domes on it and it landed dead boob center. The boob light. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fixture came down and landed dead center right on top of my head and smashed. So it was a pretty big impact. And uh, I didn't know it at that very second, but it obviously gave me a concussion. Um, but at the same time, I hear all this screaming because, you know, of the big 
loud noise and the whole house shaking and the commotion. Uh, so I run out, I'm checking and kids, wife, everybody's intact. And I'm like, okay, they're not hurt, but what just happened? And my first thought was, well, if it got hit, probably got hit on the roof. Let me go into the attic and check to see, is there a hole up there? Um, is it on fire? Do I see any sort of smoke smoldering? Um, because a lot of times after a lightning strike, you just get that slight smoldering and then the house doesn't catch on fire till much later. Um, so I get up there and I'm kind of inspecting all of that. And I sit up there probably a minute or so. Um, everything's good, right? So I go outside and think, okay, something on my house is broken. Um, and I go to the back and or go to the front and I don't see anything, go to the back. And then that's when I notice the smoke, um, coming from a neighbor's house and it was a matter of just minutes before the entire house was just engulfed in flames. And I can't even describe it, the, the amount of heat coming off of it and how quickly the entire house was consumed. Uh, just, it left me speechless. I mean, it was, it was, it just showed the power of nature, like how powerful that lightning is and, and just how powerful nature is and, and, in a fraction of a second, how your life changes, you know, a couple of minutes prior, they had a home and now they've watched everything disappear. I mean, it just is gone. It's completely gone. Um, I shared the photograph with you guys so you could see what, what it looks like, but it is just, I don't know. I'm still, so, you know, doctor's orders, um, can't drink. So I'm on my water duty and I'm not supposed to read. I uh, can't watch TV, can't uh, play around on the internet, but especially not on my phone, no texting, anything like that, anything that's going to strain the eyes. Um, and then a lot of, uh, a lot of tells, like if I'm, if I throw up or, you know, if I get queasy, if I lose my balance, because all of that I had last night, I, I was disoriented. I was talking in these half sentences where I knew what I wanted to say and I would get half of it out and then I'd have this pause where I guess my brain then catches up and then the second half of the sentence comes out. Um, and as the night went on for a little bit, it, like it, those symptoms got worse and then eventually that got better. Um, and then obviously the big headache. So needless to say, pretty eventful night last night. And then just Emotionally gutted. Yeah. And last night you said, I think I can still do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then you uh, immediately came back with, oh, my internet's out, so we can't do the podcast. <laughs> and I was going to have to step in there and be like, yeah, I think uh, I think we're good yeah. on the podcast. I'm, I'm actually a, a little weird about it right now, honestly, because I feel like you need to just be recovering from, from that. But uh, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I probably should be, but you know, the last night I, I wasn't allowed to go to sleep anyway. So, but I wanted to go to sleep badly, and I figured, well, if I'm going to be up, well, let's let's talk, let's hang out, um, which would have been an epically awful <laughs> session. <laughs> uh, so it's probably a good call that we didn't do it, and probably good thing my internet was out, which yeah. didn't give me a whole lot to do. Yeah, I feel like the, I don't know what it is about this year in particular, but I feel like the storms are just enormous and powerful and, uh, you know, us having our power knocked out for three and a half days, uh, the lightning, the, I mean, it's making national news almost every night. There's like flooding or, or large storms where we've got, we've already got warnings out for tomorrow. Uh, we have lunchtime storms and then we have some, some late evening storms. So not looking forward to any of that. Uh, I guess thankfully now I have a generator, but I feel like, uh, as far as like disaster preparedness goes, I mean, that's something that needs to be on your radar. If it's, if, it, if you're slacked on that at any point at this, at this juncture, because I don't think these storms are letting up, you know, I don't think that yeah. this is gonna, this is gonna end anytime soon. And 
like mine, it could just be a freak thing that happened and it's gone in a half an hour and boom, you're out of power for, for three days. So uh, just some things to think about. And uh, yeah, definitely happy that you're okay and happy Thanks. that you said your neighbors were not home when that happened. So They were home. They but were they home. Okay. made it out. Um, yeah, good. I mean, they had the same reaction. You know, when they when it hit, they got out. Um, so they, you know, thankfully, they're out. Their pets are out, and they were able to drive off. But wow, yeah. I had yeah. a I had a neighbor whose house burned down. It was years ago, and um, they were out of town. They're not directly my neighbors. They're you know in the neighborhood. Um, and the neighbors went in and tried to get stuff out of the house. And one of the things they did is, um, they went into his garage and pushed his cars out of the garage and he had this beat up old Toyota Camry. And, uh, so they're like, you know, Oh, like put it in neutral and just push it. Right. And pushed it out of the garage and salvaged the car. And he was like, you know, I wish you had left it in there so I could have claimed it on insurance you know, because it was just, you know, a really old Camry. <laughs> That's what so. I'd be doing. I'd be pushing stuff in the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, f- but I remember them talking about, you know, because they, they're like 10, 15 years older than us. And so their kids were raised pre-digital cameras, pre-iPhones, you know, so all those photo albums of their kids, you know. Um, sorry, one kid. They have uh, one son. But, um, yeah, it's just that all of that was lost, you know. So then they were reaching out to family members hey, do you have pictures of my kid when my kid was a kid? And uh, it just, yeah, I remember thinking about that, like, oh, man, I, you know, it, reef tank preparation is one thing, but I started to think about, like, do I have backups of stuff, you know, that are off-site or, you know, like I, you know, keep some USB stick with a bunch of pictures on it at a, a family member's house or something like that. So, uh, I mean, now we have cloud backup, right, for everything. But, you know, when this happened, that wasn't really a, a thing yet. So I was really like, oh, shoot, I need to have, like, a hard drive or USB stick, like, at somebody else's house and just stuff you don't think about. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to start. I mean, I have backups, but the backups are at home. So, if, right. you know, something happens, it all goes. All my multiple backups are gone. Um, but I'm I'm definitely now looking at, that backing up photos outside of the house, putting them somewhere else. Um, but also just, um, like emergency prep, you know, being able to get out of your house. Yeah. Now, if my house, if we were in the house and it was on fire, it usually fills up with smoke very quickly. So you can't see. And so you have to practice and come up with a plan of exiting your house with your being blindfolded. And I'm thinking that practice alone is going to be way more difficult than you think it's going to be. Um, my, like my pinky toe is hurting right now, just knowing it's going to hit absolutely everything <laughs> on the way out. So yeah, prep is a big thing. Yeah. I, we have a, one of those chain ladders that you can hang off a window that we keep upstairs in case you can't get down the stairs, you know? So yeah. it's... After that happened to the neighbor, I went like you were, uh, you are now, I went like into full prep mode of, you know, everything that you would need to get out of the house quickly and not stress about having to grab a bunch of things because you have backup somewhere else. And yeah, it's, uh, it's important. I mean, tank, we should probably make it reef oriented, right? Like obviously disaster recovery for reef tanks, but, um, but you know, it's it's your family too, right? So, yeah. man, I I had the same storm, but my stories are a lot more boring. So, <laughs> it's because all your trees are gone. <laughs> yeah, I think it helped actually. Um, we had I don't know if you recall, Raj, like a week or two ago, we had a similar storm, and it just snapped trees everywhere. Like you drive up 400 and uh, we're like, when we go up to the lake, we just see trees down everywhere. And um, so we have a big oak tree and one of the branches is as big as a tree, right? And it snapped and it's been dangling since that storm. And I'm like, that's going to come down and just destroy something below it, like our fence or something. 
and it came loose finally in this storm, but it landed in like the perfect spot where it didn't destroy anything. And we were like, huh. <laughs> so we were. Do so you want to hear a crazy story about that? The previous storm. What's that? So that storm hit and I'm, I jumped in the car driving home from the office. The traffic light falls off <laughs> and crashes to the left of me. And I'm like, holy crap. And those traffic lights are way bigger than you'd imagine them oh, to yeah. be. And, um, you know, pretty impressive when they crash. Um, so, uh, you know, I make it past that. And I shift over now. For some reason, I'm, I, I should be in the right lane. And I move over two lanes. I'm not... I still don't know why I did that. And I did that, and then a tree on the right side falls. Right, it, and it would have crashed right on top of my truck if, had I been in that right lane, and lands right next to me. I'm like, holy crap. Um, and then the, the, those are the two actual live items that happen. And then the whole way home is just navigating around all the other trees and stuff that had fallen down. But that was one after another. So, you know, now combined with yesterday, obviously, whoever's after me, they got their money shot. You got me. You got me. <laughs> but <laughs> that movie Final Destination. <laughs> yeah. Turn the boob light. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad that uh, <laughs> you guys made it through that. It's crazy. And and I, f I feel like the fact that it was so close to your house probably, like, you know, puts things in perspective yeah. uh, immediately. Um, and seeing those photos, I don't know if we can share them on the podcast, but ugh, it's, it's gut-wrenching, like you said. So uh, kind of transitioning off to, unless you've got storm damage too, Mark, but anything going on in your uh, – in your reefing world? Which one of us are you asking? Mark. <laughs> the only Mark. Um, yeah, I actually bought some corals, uh, which is a rare feat. Yeah. Um, I, going down that, like, what stuff that I've never kept, right? So I, uh, I picked up a, one of those bleeding apples, galimias, okay. tiny size of like a button you know so gotta grow that out um is it dendrophilia the uh like giant sun polyp looking oh yeah non photosynthetic the, yeah, like guys fat head dendros fat head dendros there you go uh grab one of those and i put it on a magnet uh right below the feeding ring so it's kind of great because like when i feed pellets it just <laughs> you know gets gets some leftovers every yeah. time um probably out more too because of that yeah it's like feed me see more it's yeah. straight up little shop of horrors right there um what else did i get i don't know some other stuff that i don't recall but um was this so a yeah. local fish store run or was this a late night beer late night beer yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to give a shout out to who you who you purchased from Eh. no okay <laughs> the, the, <laughs> so where where did you put the scully? Uh, it's on a magnet on the glass, like oh, oh. La, you know, kind of a little what would Jake do kind of thing with yeah. this tank. Where I um, yeah, I'm being weird with this tank where I put all my uh, flower pots or goniaporas on pillars. Like I just stacked little mm -hmm. stack rocks, Julian toolfishy stack rocks, and created little pillars. And then I've got. Um, trackies and stuff on the bottom and then i was like well you know you, scullies and stuff you'll often see in the wild like on a wall or so i thought oh, i'll just put those on the back wall with magnets so something something hokey that i could see jake doing so i thought i'd do it <laughs> so yeah that's awesome yeah that's, that's cool a, that's uh what else what else is new in my fish world nothing else man i'm yeah how about you? You're the one with the new tank and the, all the all the new stuff going on. And how's yeah, the stuff. build? Stuff is happening. Um, I don't know if people on the podcast will be able to see it, but I mean, it's the stand is up. It's done. I've got some rock in there. Uh, I think I have an idea for an aquascape, but we'll talk about that uh, in the main topic today. Um, I got some LED strips for the cabinet. 
I think anybody who's had a black cabinet can say it is so dark. <laughs> and this is the one thing that, uh, you know, coming from these two by four stands that I've kind of rigged up over the years, it's all open down there. And so I can see everything and it's fantastic. And then, you know, all this because it's sleek and sexy and modern, it's so dark. So I got some LED uh, strip lights and I put them up on the perimeter and it, it looks like a showroom, you know, floor all of a sudden. Of course, there's no water in it at this point, but. Uh, when that happens, they, it just made such a big difference. I feel like that should be included in some way with these with these kits. Do you have a uh, like a controller for it, like a Neptune or a Coral View or whatever? I have a I have a couple options. GHL. I can run the Apex, the little guy. I've got that on my Lagoon right now, and it's not really doing anything. It's a twenty five gallon tank. Uh, but I do have the Proflux, the GHL Proflux Ooh. that I have not even taken out of the box yet. And uh, I could set that up. So I was going to say um, what has saved my ass a lot uh, while I was on vacation is not only having a webcam on the reef tank, but having a webcam mounted over the sump. Um, but uh, it's pre- like you said, it's pretty dark in there. So it's like permanent night vision. Um, so I put those uh, LED lights on the controller so I could toggle them on and off remotely. Nice. And mm-hmm. uh, that was awesome because then you're not like using the night crappy night vision of the camera to yeah. see if your skimmer's <laughs> overflowing. You can like light it up. So that's yeah. a great idea too because I don't, you know, you don't want to run these things under your cabinet for longer than you need to. You just want to have them on for the, you know, the time that you're working down there. Unless you have people coming over and you got the doors off, you know, like a Jeep or something. <laughs> and you want to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want to flash, you know, what's going on underneath there. You just clean it up. You might as well get some love for it, right? Um, so the Aquascape is next. I've got a couple pieces that Kevin Berta made for this four-foot tank in there right now. And I think that might be like the middle. They're, they're um, the uh, negative, what do they call it? Negative space. NSA. Yeah, the negative. I don't want to totally do that throughout the whole entire uh, tank. I don't want to. I don't want that look. I just feel like I don't know. I want more Heidi Heidi holes and all that for the fish, and I feel like they'll be more comfortable if they have, you know, more of those places to hide. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm jumping the gun on the uh, topic today. So, um, my wisdom teeth come out on Thursday. <laughs> so. I don't know how I'm going to feel, but I think I'm I'm taking off a couple of days of work so maybe I can, you know, fill the tank up, at least get a leak test going on here and uh get everything ready to go. But it's plumbed. You know, return pumps in, everything's ready to go. I just need to to, you know, throw some RO in there. I don't know, what do you think? You think I throw hose water in there just from the tap off the bat or should I just you know, run the RO up to it just so I'm ready. If it, you know, everything, everything goes well and I can just toss some salt in there. What's Jake the... would tell you tap water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you going to make up the water in a vat and then put it in there? Or are you going straight into the tank? I mean, I think I've got enough uh, line that I could just run it from the, the actual RODI unit to the tank. Um, It'd obviously take a lot more time than if I just turned on the hose and ran it through this window down here. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of starting off on the wrong foot. So to do a hydro test, run that with a hose and make sure you don't have any leaks and all that good stuff. And, you know, find that one plumbing fitting that you forgot to glue and uh, the threaded fitting that needs just a bit more Teflon tape or yeah. juice on it. Um, but then... Just take your time. It, it it just bothers me when when you get you you take your time and do all of the things right. You take you put the tank together carefully and plumb it all up nicely, and then you want to shortcut putting water in there with tap water. So what I did Especially, was I took I did tap, but I had one of those BRS media reactors. That's really just an RODI canister, right? Um, you guys have seen those, right? Yeah, that's it's, not yeah. a media reactor. That is a RO canister. It, yeah, exactly. Um, so I just I bought like a twenty dollar DI um, cartridge mm. and just popped that in there. Just went straight DI. 
Yeah, and yeah. well, but I ran it with a like it was like a carbon filter, you know, uh, like a media reactor with the tap water in it, and figured, you know, yeah, is it? I don't. Well, so your mileage might vary, right? So that's the thing about that question is it all depends. Like my TDS is like 20. Yeah, um, that's amazing. Yeah, so, you know, running a DI resin in the tank for like a day or two probably was plenty enough for me to, and I think I put in like um, Cooper's Orb, you know, like which also picks up other kinds of heavy metals and some carbon. And then I went... Uh, I just went with it, but I, I just didn't want to wait on the RO, but I do, uh, Raj is, he's right. Like, you know, what's an extra few days, you know, in the grand scheme of things, especially just cause you're going to be like in six months of ugly, you know, algae anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the next, the next step is just doing a, a hydro test as, as you called it there, Raj, but, right. um, the tub life is awesome. I kind of like it. It's, it, it's like, like having a coral, little pond. <laughs> coral's rocking in there. Like, I actually, I I got a torch last time we talked, and I got a couple more because they're just doing so good. Um, so everything's just like rocking in there. Uh, the protein skimmer in there, and um, yeah, I think it, my only mishap was that that one sarco fight and that one toadstool that got like a big brown spot on it just rolled over for a couple of days and now it's back. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's the they, beauty of the sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just like, I'm pissed at this move. I'm going to let you know it. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to become erect for at least a week and a half. Yeah, it's, but it's I'm good now. Good, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the top life is, is not bad. It's not bad. It's kind of, it's kind of fun to see everything from the top too. I don't That's know. the best view. Yeah. I, I, I was always, I remember when I looked at my tank with one of those um, coral viewer things for the first time, and I was like, holy crap, I didn't realize the colors were this amazing up here. Yeah. And then you get disappointed when you're looking at it from this front and figure, trying to figure out how can I angle the lighting <laughs> so that I can get the same colors from the front and... Yeah. Just put all your scolies on magnets and you're good. Magnet scolies. I, n- <laughs> I never did scolies in my tank because I could never figure out how to make them look good. I, I never liked that the tanks with just random scolies laying around on the sand bed and just it looked messy. Yeah, so mine came in with a giant aptasia on it, which really irked me. Nice. <laughs> Um, now you really got to call out this. No. <laughs> I was like, come on, that's man. just lazy. Yeah. If you're a coral vendor and you're selling out and you're sending out corals with Aptasia on it, that's lazy. Well, we're not talking about, you know, a six inch scoli. We're talking about, you know, it's the size of a button, you know I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like you could have sold it as like a combo rock because the Aptasia <laughs> was so big. Right. Um, so then I had to figure out, like, how do I kill the Aptasia without killing the Scoli? And at first I thought I'd do, like, the uh, F, F Aptasia stuff. And I was like, you know, this thing looks like it's been chopped, you know, already. So I thought, all right, I'll just uh, chop it a little more. And I definitely pissed it off for, like, a couple of days by cutting into the skeleton to get the Aptasia out. Because it's, um, it's like a porous skeleton, right? Um but now he's back and he took food this morning. So I'm like, all right, we're good. Aptasia gone. Nice. nice. Took a little nick, took a little lamp to the head, but he's all right, you know. <laughs> Too soon, Mark. Too sorry. soon. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's, so I guess my next question is, just before we get into aquascaping here is, and this is a big question because Carib C sent a bunch of rock and long story short... <laughs> Carib C sent the rock via yellow. And if you guys have seen any of the news about yellow, they went bankrupt. And it's unfortunate because I think there's like 30,000 plus people that are just out of a job. Um, and I don't know that's financial decisions made by the company or whatever. But in the midst of all that, my rock is just hanging out in the terminal of, you know, the St. Louis terminal of yellow. Uh, YRC is what they call it. 
And so it took some back and forth with Carib Z and me and the terminal to get that. They brought it up and I was like, I hope this is all going to fit in the forerunner. They're like, it's 500 pounds of rock and sand. <laughs> uh, oh thankfully God. it all fit, but it's, um, uh, I've got a, I've got a ton of sand and my biggest question is, and let me know in the comment section too, do I go bare bottom on this tank in kind of in memory of Jake? Uh, Cause I know that Jake would probably go bare bottom on this or do I put it in there? You know, I really want a lot of rasses. I want some rasses in this tank. I know I can just, you know, put a tub of sand somewhere and kind of hide it in the back. But what do you guys think? I mean, I went bare bottom because that's, I've never done it. And that was a big Jake thing. So, but I, I'm a huge sand fan. So I'm going to vote sand. Yeah, I'm. I mean, my mood changes, you know, seasonally how I feel about it. Because I, I always, I was pro sand, and I debated that with Jake at length. Where it's like, yeah, I agree, bare bottom, in my opinion, is ten times easier and ten times less headache. But I like the way it looks, right? So um, I've settled on the the reborn stuff, which is just coral rubble on the bottom of your tank. Um, which wrasses do not like. So I do still have a patch in the back for my Melanaris wrasse, but uh, of sand. I just find with sand, um, I've had good luck with it, but then I've also had a lot of bad luck where uh, I deal with a lot more cyano when I have sand. And um, cyano doesn't seem to uh, be as much of an issue in a bare bottom tank, or at least not for me. I've never, I don't think I've ever had cyano in a bare bottom reef. Um, and then I like the rubble because it essentially is live rock and your tangs can graze it. Your urchins can graze it. Corlin grows on it. Um, so it sort of just becomes more rock, right? Um, if you've got algae on your rocks, you're going to have algae on your reborn rubble bottom. But if you can, if you've got the balance with herbivores and everything else that, your rock is clean, then the rubble stays relatively clean. And in an era where everybody was like, oh, crushed coral is a nitrate factory, right? It's a nitrate trap. And now we got people dosing nitrates. Yep. Um, I, I just, I have zero nitrates and I have rubble on the bottom of one of my tanks. So the other tank's bare bottom. It is way easier. Uh, I don't know. That's the other thing is like when I do substrate, I tend to, and I don't know why this is, if algae releases terpenoids that inhibit the growth of certain algaes. But um, when I did do uh, substrate, like um, I really liked Carib C special grade. That's um, my favorite. That's that was a good, yeah, it's, yep. it's good. If I was going to do sand, that's what I would do. Um, in my weird experience, again, just speaking for me, uh, I would be, I had more success keeping that substrate clean if I had uh, a refugium with macroalgae growing. And I don't think the macroalgae was out-competing anything. I just think that for some reason there's some inhibitors that are produced or something that I just had less crap growing in the tank. Um, but I'm, I'm digging this downstairs it's funny. It's like a Petco dollar special tank. It's got a tonsy skimmer in the corner, one of those comm lines and it's bare bottom. And it just, it has like the most expensive corals I have in it. <laughs> and then the expensive tank upstairs has like all these cheapy corals. Cause I used to have angels that would, you know, chomp on everything. So I, you know, everything had to be disposable for them. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's really a you decision. I think you can make it work either way, right? Like you can you can put that special grade in there and you might have some ups and downs, but you'll eventually get it figured out and get a balance. And if that's what yeah. you like, well, you know, go I for mean, it. you don't really have your downs if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? If you're taking care of the tank, you're doing the proper husbandry, then then it's maintained. Your bare bottom is easier because you that's one less thing to take care of. You don't have to maintain the sand bed and clean it and you can blast way more flow that kicks up any detritus into the water column and then out through the overflow through your sump. Um, I don't know. 
if we wanted an easy hobby, this surely wasn't the right path <laughs> right. for us. Yeah. <laughs> this that's kind of uh, that's kind of the way I'm leaning is bare bottom because I would like to make this a pretty SPS heavy tank uh, as it matures, and so I can have a rip and current in there, and you know it can really have some flow. I think that's the one thing that I haven't really had in a tank that I've you know in my possession is a tank with like good ass flow. Um, and I, I really want to do that on this one. So, hmm. so are you challenging me? We're going to go with two bare bottom tanks and see who comes up with the better reef tank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's the old head talking. <laughs> Bark, your rubble, the uh, being that it's rubble, um, doesn't it go pink? Yeah, eventually. Um, so then you have a pink sand bed. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I don't. I've seen that happen in tanks. I don't really have that happen in my tanks so much, but I think it's because I have urchins. Um, yeah, I, but I, I have seen that in a tank before, where like the rubble bottom just goes full on purple. But you know, it doesn't like to grow on coralline, other algae, right? So it's and the, the other fun thing about a rubble tank, which might drive somebody who likes everything clean and organized uh, crazy is that when shit breaks off your rocks, it just starts growing on the bottom because it just landed on <laughs> rubble. You know what I mean? You don't lose any corals to the, like, the, the, the you know, the dunes of the sand, you know? The, <laughs> like, it's, uh, Unless so it's, it's kind of funny. Train. I mean, like, I have a piece of uh, Montipora that, like, broke off and just landed, and now it's, now it's a new coral just growing down there. <laughs> so free frag plugs. Yeah. yeah. Just glue the glue the piece of reborn to a rock and boom. But I think a bare bottom is the same issue, right? Eventually coralline takes it over. Unless you're that's gonna unless be the, you're scraping it. That's gonna be me. I, I can't stand coralline like on the back of the glass or anything like that. So I'll be scraping now the bottom to try and keep it clean and then I'll get obsessed because I can't get close enough to the rock <laughs> to, you know, and I'll have that little, little island or patches of coralline that I couldn't get. And this is going to be problematic. I'm going to need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I put a, uh, some, it's a really weird, dense carpet, uh, green star polyp. It's not your usual green star polyp. It's, um, I know Jake would know the answer just because he collected all the different things that are called green star polyps, and he went through them once with me. Um, but I put that on the bottom of this bare bottom tank, and I got this little rug now of you know, green cool. star polyps. Yeah, that, that would be cool to do, like the freshwater guys do, where they do these yeah. outdoor scapes where it looks like you're you're looking at a forest. But if we could do a freshwater, ver- or, I mean, a saltwater version of that, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's just keeping that stuff at bay. I know it's super easy to, it, I think when I first got into the hobby, I was like, man, that would be so cool. But how are you going to frag that up every, and it's just, it's GSP. Just take a razor to it and, yep. you know, put it somewhere else in the tank or put it in the frag tank or, you know, throw it out in your backyard, whatever that, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But yeah, I think that'd be really cool. I, I've seen it successfully maybe two times i know inappropriate reefer did uh one of those like grass bottom the gsp bottoms in his uh, drop off tank this was a while ago and it got to the point where he had to start you know it was like an every week kind of thing you got to go in there with a razor blade and make sure it's not coming up your front display glass and all that or on the rock because it can start to take over the rock where your you know your nice coral is so yeah i think it just becomes a maintenance thing after it is filled in but it'll take a while to get there. Yeah, but I, um, not to get into a gardening reference, but I one thing I noticed with reef keeping is that we try to avoid that maintenance, right? It's why we hate the weed corals. We hate Xenia. We hate, we're always, you know, like, oh, that means I would have to get in there and clean it up periodically. And then, you know, now that I'm getting into gardening a little bit, like the gardening crowd is like, yeah, no, you got to, you got to do stuff. I mean, like the dishes are never done, dude, yeah. you know? Yeah. The, like, well, it's the same with the planted tanks, right? Those manicured planted oh, tanks yeah. aren't like that every day unless you are maintaining it. You're trimming it. You're cutting, you're mowing the lawn in there and, and 
trimming the plants to where it looks like it is a forest. Those things are high maintenance. I mean, yeah. you, they, that's why they have all those cool little tools, those little scissors and stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we have Lars. Do you remember Lazy that from Joe's reefer. talk? Yeah. Lazy ass reefer syndrome. But I get it. I mean, I, I think I started to hate Acropora after a while when I had an SPS dominant tank because they either die on you for no reason and piss you off or they become weeds. I mean, they, a lot of them do, right? Not Some are slow growing, but eventually they just start to grow into each other and you're like, God damn it, I got to frag this. I got to break that. And <laughs> yeah, that, that was bird's nest for me. Yep. Always would do one of the two. It would have made it out of explosive growth and then it would just, I don't know, you wake up and you're like, yeah, I'm dead now. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of reefer are you? Yeah. What's <laughs> up, man? You having a good day? Not tomorrow. I'm sure this dude is a legend, but David Easterbrook, is he a legend? Have you guys ever heard of him? He's a bonsai guy. No. Oh. I will say that out of all the things that TikTok has done negative in the world, positive, it has brought this man into my my <laughs> news feed or my algorithm. This dude has so many bonsai forests, and I'm talking like... <sighs> It's 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 a lot like those freshwater scapes where it looks like a gigantic forest in a twenty gallon tank, but he does them in these really shallow pots, and it looks like these forests have been around forever. And and in some cases, he's been doing them like this particular forest for forty, fifty years. So he'll like roll it in on this cart and be like, eh, "This is my whatever forest. It's like forty years old." And it'll spray it down with water and then on to the next, but. Um, it's like opened my eyes to this bonsai culture. It's crazy. It's funny that happened to me and it's in a previous reef therapy with Jake where Instagram just decided like the algorithm was like, I bet this guy would like bonsai stuff. And it's just, my feed was just bonsai <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, I don't even, I don't have a bonsai tree. Why is this on my feed? But then it sucks you in. And we actually talked about it because it is a fascinating world. Uh, as a hobbyist, you can appreciate as a reef hobbyist, you can appreciate what they're doing. And seeing them repot those things where they like take them out and they have the bristle brushes and they like don't break the roots and they get all the dirt out. Mm -hmm. But it, that's sort of the point I guess I was trying to make is I've tried to start having more of that mindset towards my aquarium where it's like, look, yeah, I got to get in there. That, you know, And I think most of the tanks that I think are very mature and beautiful and successful usually you find out that the guy behind it or, or woman is that's how they are. Like they're, yep. they're on top of yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, 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 I catch myself doing it where like, I'm like, I can tell a coral is just not happy in a spot. Right. And I'm just like, man, that coral's not happy. Like <laughs> a week later, like, yeah, that coral's not happy. And it doesn't register in my brain until like three weeks later, like, why don't I move it? Like, why don't I put it somewhere else? Maybe there's too much flow, you know? And I just sit there and I'm like, yeah, I got to do something about that. So yeah. I'm yeah. a lazy reefer. <laughs> I need to work on that. <laughs> That's the thing is I, I feel like, you know, when I win the Mega Millions tonight, uh, I can just have everybody do the, that for me, you know, the maintenance stuff. For what me. is it up to? 1.2? 1. 1. Billion? 1.58. Yeah. Five eight. Lump sum is seven hundred and some million dollars. And I'm in the office pool and we would each take home fourteen pre tax. If, if I win, uh, I'm buying a conspic angel. I'm finally <laughs> gonna buy one. Finally. <laughs> yeah. I'll buy another relic vendor and a conspic angel. Yeah. I'll and what do you do? I'm up. gonna give you the Jake speech. You know they're not that cool, right? <laughs> and then he gets them like the right. awesome angels like man <laughs> screw you man <laughs> all right so aquascape on this 160 or on this uh 625 the red sea so right now i have these two nsa pieces in the middle and i kind of want to build off from there um my my vision right now is these two nsa pieces in the middle which probably i don't know i think they're probably 15, 16 inches high. And then I want to put two larger. So Carib C have the, has these, um, what they call reef trees. Mm -hmm. And you can stick the fiberglass pole down in there and you just kind of build off of that. A couple of those on each side. 
larger and then on the bottom kind of making little caves and you know things like that throughout the the, the bottom of that but I'm, I'm not sure how high to go because i know that on a lot of jake's tanks he'd he'd only really go up between a quarter and a half you know as far as rock goes because he knew that you know, a lot of those stags were going to grow to be you know touching the water at some point so i guess that's my big question is how high do i go I know the rule of thirds and all of that, but this is definitely not three. This is four. Uh, my original idea was like three large bombies and to go from that. But I don't know. Any 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 ideas if you had to escape a tank? It's five feet long. It's about two feet deep. And then I think it's two feet high. I think if you're going to do staghorns, you definitely don't want to go beyond half. Um it really depends on what kind of corals you're keeping, right? Uh, I, I think you can go higher if you're going with more compact growing corals, but if you're going to do some staghorns and that kind of stuff, then I would probably stick to half. Because the other issue, too, is flow, right? Uh, you don't want to cut off flow. And that upper half of that upper portion of the tank, you can usually get like a nice flow getting across. But once those corals, which this happened to my friend, with the green slimers, right? They, they grow like crazy, and then they form little atolls. <laughs> like yeah. they hit the surface, and then they die, and they kind of grow out. Um, and then you're battling flow even more. Um, so if you're going to do an SPS tank, if you're going to go with some staghorns, that's what I would do. Um, now, one thing about the tree formation, because I did some of those, is that you do get a lot of shading because they're very vertical. And then you, the way you can put them together based on where the holes are, you also end up with some cool overhangs. But I don't like the overhangs, especially with NSA as well, with uh, LED lighting, um, like point source. Um, it looks cool to have shadows. Like I, I like point source lighting, but I feel like the overhangs just kind of make it even worse. Like you, 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 you end up cutting off areas where you could grow stuff even more. So uh, for me, like, that's one thing I didn't like about those. Um, I ultimately abandoned the sticks that came with those kits. And I did what um, Than from Tidal Gardens did a video on, which is you can get this really runny, watery super glue. It's got a high viscosity. And then what I did is I just bought a bag of um, sugar size sand, like the, um, <laughs> forget what Carabasi calls it. Um, like the Fiji pink or yeah that'd be a good one and then I would just put the rocks in a way that I liked find where they touch I'd scoop in a bunch of sand there like an hourglass that sand starts to go away so then I quickly hit it with some of that watery super glue and the reaction between the super glue and the um the calcium carbonate aragonite sand is like instant like it instantly sets yeah and it's funny because, like, when you're working on uh, guitars, one of the things you can do to, like, accelerate super glue and also harden it is add baking soda, uh, sprinkle baking soda on oh. it. And I think that the same thing is happening when you use aragonite sand and you squirt this runny super glue, and it just, like, leaches in, right? Um, I had a lot more fun, and I found that I could build way cooler structures that way than using their... Um, they're like ceramic sticks yeah. or whatever they provide. Yeah. Like that's cool because it's you can remove stuff, right? It's like a it's like a Jenga where if your staghorn does get too big, you could just slide it off the the stick and like take one of the rocks off and set it lower, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's what you want to do. But the sand glue trick that uh, the Tidal Gardens video documented is that's like I'll. I told Jake this too. Like I'll never aquascape differently like i'll do that from now on and yes the carob sea rock is purple and the sand in the joints is white but it really doesn't look that bad uh you know and it yeah it'll all be and, covered eventually so yeah and half the time you have like a rock and then go well i want to make this rock smaller so then you hit it with you know <laughs> a chisel and a hammer and now the interior of that carob sea rock is white too but it's like a mixture of that white and purple. It all just, it all works out. It looks fine. So Yeah, that is the one thing that when you start to break this stuff 
there it's like stark white <laughs> yeah. in the middle of these rocks um let me get this really quick he does have a lot of rock back there i know wow <laughs> So for the people that are watching on YouTube, this is the tree kit. So you can see what Mark is talking about here, where it's like, mm, okay. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not talking, I'm not talking bad about it. You really have to like play with it. Right. Yeah. Um, but you're right. When you just have a, when you just have one vertical rod that just kind of goes straight up in the air, there's not, it's not a ton you can do with that. Now, I will say they have these 18 inch arches that Judd was showing me at one of the shows where you can take just the tip of that. And, and then you have all of a sudden this like 18 inches of, of kind of, uh, inverted arch on this rod, which kind of makes a cool shape. It doesn't, I don't know how natural it looks, but I think I might have to do the, the fan technique or that, you know, that runny glue, super glue technique with the, uh, with the sand. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think the glue is made by Glue Masters. Um, I, I think I ordered it on Amazon. That stuff, though, one obviously. Well, he's not listening, so he'll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he won't heed the advice at all. He left you again. <laughs> um, I mean, I was about to give you some warnings, and you walked away. Uh, but <laughs> and I'm like, I should have just said them anyway. I'll, I'll and take. Then, I'll take the warnings. <laughs> um, and again, watch the Tidal Gardens video because he he does a really good job covering it. But one very strong, noxious smell. So obviously, do it outside because this super glue it's it says it has the same viscosity of like rubbing alcohol. It's so thin. Yeah. Um, and two, if it gets on anything, it reacts. Man, I had these cloth gloves on, and it melted the cloth into my skin, and it was burning. So I th I think. And I, I think you're okay if you use like, I don't know, rubber or other types of gloves, but it, it definitely is, uh, it's no joke. But with all those warnings, like it's crazy. Like you literally can just play like, okay, I want this rock to like completely hang off of this rock. And you just put some sand there, squirt it, hold it for like three seconds and it's done. Wow. And you're like, all right, on to the next one. So you can build really quickly. Yeah, um, I think that's what Kevin uses. So this is uh this is a piece from Kevin. Oh nice. One of those NSA pieces. And you 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 can't see any seams on this. I mean if you look really hard you can see the seams, but uh this shipped to me like this. That's crazy. In foam. It's pretty crazy. I'm sure Raj has some experience with uh the spray foam shipping stuff. Yeah, material. that stuff is nasty. Yeah. So it was so hard to <laughs> <laughs> to find the rock within the foam. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I might use these as kind of little like centerpieces for the middle of it. This was actually, it was meant for a, my four foot tide line. Um, but I think this, this might be cool as kind of a, cause I kind of want to bring it f top and down into the middle where it like kind of goes up on either side, if that makes sense. But until you really start playing around with it, do you really know? So so there's there's um the putties available that are that are dyed that pink and purple. So if you wanted to join the yeah. rock, you could do your little you could do the slurry or cement and then cover it up. Oh yeah, you could do that. Yeah. But I've seen I thought you where you were going with that was I've seen some of these YouTube people put it together with the putty. Oh no. And I'm like, oh, that sounds awful. Yeah, no, and they're no, like, it no. fell while I was sleeping. It yeah. broke down. I, I tried to move it, and, Ugh. and you're like, yeah, I, I, I was like cementing the rock, um, because I mostly work with a lot larger aquariums. So if you have a any sort of type of rock fall, it's it's devastating. Um, so I always like cementing them together. But then you always you have that aesthetic issue that. You've got all your joints that are visible unless you do all white rock. That makes it nice and easy because you can cover it with sand and it just, it blends away. Yeah. Um, so I would cement them together. I would use some of that purple stuff, but I found that I could just take the other purple rock, smash it up, and then take smaller pieces of that to cover up the joints and do that in 
in ways that it looks more natural, right? It, not just blatantly that I'm hiding a joint. Um, so it, it does take a lot more effort and more creativity, but it's, it's doable to where you don't have that, the white spots or um, gray spots if you're using a different type of cement. Is there a product out there that is like a spray paint that after you're done, you can just kind of like coat the entire thing? I feel like that would be a good product. I saw one <laughs> of the Live Rock uh, vendors sell it. Like it's like a stain or something, but. Yeah, just something to yeah, hide there, all there's the There's dyes that, are, that would be safe. And then there's um, Krylon paints that are safe. Um, there, there's also. Like boat paint? Um, similar to that, but you, you've got, um, you've got the paints that they use on the inside of fiberglass tanks. Um, and you can get that from Sherwin Williams even. So, you know, you can get small batches of that made up, but they can, that usually comes in a blue, but you can have them tint that to whatever color you wanted. I never really thought about that. Yeah. I wonder how I'm, that would look. I mean, if you do tinker with the sand, I mean, just order some of that glue, get a bag of. I think I got the PetSmart uh, Aragonite Oolite sand because it was easy to get. Um, I don't think it looks bad. Like, I think it's, it doesn't, you know, and if you look at traditional live rock, it's not 100% purple. There's tons of white patches. Um, so I, I I don't know. I wouldn't overthink it. I think, uh, and, and it's nice too because I literally, I created a negative aquascape or NSA and I hated it. And so I took it out and I had to use a sledge, like a hammer and a chisel mm. to break it apart. That's how good those glue aragonite joints are. Like I literally had to re-break it. So what was the main thing you didn't like about the NSA scape? Um, so I had, the, I had the Kessels point source. I created all these crazy overhangs and uh you're naturally gonna have shadows with leds and i just like i said i i i i made it even worse on myself um and then the other thing i didn't like is that everything was nsa just to try something new and i just felt like it wasn't very natural and as soon as i started breaking that up and creating piles of rock again in certain areas with nooks and crannies I noticed my angel, my potter's angel particularly, his behavior completely changed. And he was darting in and out of the rocks like I would see when I was in Hawaii snorkeling, right? Like they just kind of poke in and out of holes. Um, and then I was also able to create a more horizontal, um, uh, not palette was the word I'm looking for, uh, you know, aquascape that I could then plant more corals on. I've since gone a little bit more vertical again, but... Um, the crazy overhangs, I think if you have a distributed light source like T5s or these new LED light bars, it's not so bad. Or even, I think, the Ecotex and stuff that are more like a panel light. But once you get into, like, the point source, those overhangs can be a real pain in the butt. I mean, I mean you can put, like, a little tracky under there, and he probably wouldn't care. But, um, yeah. You can hang a bunch of those fathead dendros underneath. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I've always I've always wanted to do that. Like put them all mm-hmm. like in a cave but upside down. Yep. See, but then you gotta feed them and if they're hard to get to nah. you know no, they just they'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always wanted like, to do that with those carnation here? corals. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That nobody can keep alive. Yeah. But I know. if you could pull that off, man, that would look so amazing on a reef. I keep hoping we figure that out. I remember when the uh the purple bacteria non-sulfur purple bacteria or whatever came out there was like a i remember jake thinking like this might be it like we could feed with this and yeah. I, I think it didn't work out long term perhaps but uh or, or maybe you just had to feed it a lot more than he was feeding but yeah those are those are still cool corals they're so cool yeah all the a lot of those those nps you know uh, gorgs and things like that are freaking awesome i mean they're just really cool um, hard to keep alive, obviously, because you got to con- yeah. constantly be feeding the, the water column with something um, valuable for them. Raj, I want to get your take on the scape. I know that you're more of a minimalist scaper. I've never actually <laughs> seen any of your work, but uh, uh, how, what, would your, what would your initial, like if you had this five-foot tank, what are you, what are you doing with it? 
The two feet is tough because, uh, man, that doesn't give you a lot of depth to work with because you have to be away from the front pane, right? So if you give yourself six inches away from the front, you're, you're now down to 18. You're going to leave some space in the back. Uh, you're, you're almost down to, what, 12, 14 inches now. Okay, I'll get Makes it tough. Tank. You need a bigger tank. <laughs> um, I like, there's this one feature that I always tend to do in all of my aquascapes is this valley where it's, it's almost like this pathway for the fish to go. Uh, but I don't do it just directly front to back. I do it at an angle mm -hmm. so that the valley exists, but you don't, it doesn't look like this big blank spot in the tank, although it is a very wide blank spot in the tank. And I found, like, to me, working on that valley is super, super interesting because you, you get your coral to grow out in that, alley, uh, in that valley, but the fish interaction there is amazing. And so that's one of my favorite, favorite features to do. Um, but, you know, I am a minimalist when it comes to the rock because I don't like a lot of rock in there. I don't like the big wall look. I don't like going too tall. Um, I... I, I tend to plan for the corals a yeah. lot. Um, As you should, I think. Yeah, and, and, and that's a big thing that people really miss out on is they fill the tank and make it look amazing. Like they'll do this great aquascape, but that's it. It's full now. It's done. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for clients, I've done it in a way to where the tank looks more full because, you, you know, if I walk away from escape, they're going to be like, hey, dude, you, <laughs> you, you, you are not done. Um, <laughs> And so I, I do a more full scape with a plan that these certain rocks are coming out. Like, yeah. you, you know, in six months as things are growing up, we're going to start slowly removing that rock. And by that time, they're not noticing that that's happening. And then they end up with a great looking scape. Yeah. When but, you speak of a valley, are you talking about like, uh, like two large rock structures that are kind of at a diagonal so that... Yeah, so instead of like that, they're like that. Okay. That's yeah. exactly that how my tank is. I've got it yeah. sort of like this, where so if you're looking straight at it, you don't see it. But if you kind of look at an angle, you can kind of see that you there's see a cut that through. You see that huge cut through. And, and I make it wide. It, it, it does take up a lot of real estate. Yeah, mine's like a few inches because my tank's only 24 <laughs> front to back. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> I, I, I want to see growth in that valley. And so there are going to be corals that are they're pointed to the back of the tank that you don't see unless you intentionally look down that valley. But that, to me, is really, really cool because it's not something that you're constantly seeing. So when you take the time to go and really explore your tank and you get to look down there, it's almost like a surprise, like, oh, wow, that really grew in nicely. Or, and you see fish that hang out back there. Um, it just seems to give them this refuge where if there's too much commotion going on up front, they can kind of go out and hang out back there in that, in that little valley. Noted. Yeah, the, the, the one other thing I was going to say about pillars is – they're good for encrusting corals if you have the right kind of light to bathe all the rock in light. But as if you're mounting corals that grow outwards, they just start to shadow each other, right? Yeah. So that's why these pillars that are trees are kind of cool at first, but again, not with, you know, two years of coral growth in mind. And then the other weird observation I've always made is sometimes the best aquascapes I've ever seen uh, have to be seen in person and they don't photograph well. And then there's ones that photograph really well, but then you see it in person, you're like, eh. And I don't know what that's about. I think it's just the two-dimensional nature of a photograph that you can't get the sense of depth as much. But uh, that's been the case so many times where I've seen like these killer aquascapes in person. I'm like, oh, that's way like... You see the the caves and everything, but they don't show up in photographs all the time. So, yeah, um, yeah. If you're if you're all about the Instagram, man, you know, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I 
I really want like you know I want I want some of the some millies in there. I love some you know good tabling acros, speciosa. You know all the all the good. Not necessarily. I don't want to make it a whole staghorn tank per se because I I think that that can get big quick, right? But a lot of those compact acros that are just kind of you can get a nice colony of it and it doesn't take up a ton of room and it's not going to shadow a ton. Um, I love Monty's too. I love, I love how they grow. Um, uh, the, the, you know, the spiral upward and all that. And mm -hmm. I know that they get to be a big problem with shadowing things later down the road. But like when I think of a, a wild coral reef, I think about Monty's just hanging off of those, hanging off of rocks in those valleys, you know, and making those, those little, um, places for fish to perch and that kind of thing. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, I, uh, like I said, it really it really isn't going to come together until I start just playing with it, right? So, um. I like uh, Digitata a lot. Uh, the Capricornus I, I got over because um, they're when they do, that's a coral that's really cool at first, and then it just keeps going and going, and you're yep. like, please stop. Um, <laughs> Dang it, Mark. <laughs> Digitatas I like because they do encrust a ton, almost yeah. like a encrusting Monty. But obviously they're branching, right? Digitata, like that's in the name. Um, but I just like the way they grow because they just coat the whole rock and they're just sending out branches everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I Still feel like so. they're pretty easy to keep uh, in check too. You know, you just, um, as long as they're on one rock kind of thing. Bubblegum Digi, that's one I picked up a little while ago and that was kind of a cool new school for me. Uh, you know, like I love my old school orange digis, but bubblegum, that's a cool coral, man. I, I enjoy that one a lot. So it's weird. Yeah, digis are that, always man. cool. Yeah. Can't go wrong with digis. Caps. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Caps look cool, but then they, for me, they would always collect sand right in the center. And so you'd have that spot where it's just dead and they just kept, I mean, I, I had some monster colonies of it, but I, I could never keep it under control because you can't break it just right either. Yeah. No, it so never breaks right. Hard yeah. to... <laughs> like, a, like a green slimer, you know, it'll go crazy, yeah. but you can just hack it back. It's like one of those things you just hack it back and then it just comes back. It looks great for a while again. Yeah, right. Um, that's what I like about the, uh, the, the staghorns, you know, because like, they have a nice base at that point. You just whack, whack, whack. They grow back. <laughs> Caps? No. <laughs> you always break them in a weird way. Yep. And then you just want to give it away. So the parrotfish <laughs> taking bites out of it. Yeah. Super jaggedy and pointy in places. And yeah. Uh, that's my green showing through there a little bit. But uh, maybe I'll have no. to learn the hard way. <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, look at me. Like I'm going through like what are corals I've never kept, right? Um, I think everyone should grow out a cap at least once. It's fun. Oh, definitely. Um, but, you know, yeah. once you've done it, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have done. Well, well and any... they don't look good from the front. To Raj's point about looking from the top, yeah, a cap yeah, looks yeah. awesome from the top. But eventually it gets so big that you're looking at its sides, right? Yes. <laughs> you just... yeah. You're looking at the shit part of it, and it <laughs> sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, if you have any suggestions, any anything that you think I should do, throw that in the comments section below. Any... Uh, pictures that you want to send us of your scape would be uh, would be cool too for some inspiration. I uh, wanted to get to some comments before we get out of here tonight. Uh, Cloppy is back. Mark has to add turtle grass into his lagoon tank. <laughs> would be an awesome biotope like with the LPS corals. Also, I remember him saying back in the day with Jake he wanted to get dragon face pipefish. I did. Man, I don't remember that. You've been talking about Australia Gyro for over 10 years now, so. Yeah, apparently. I can't believe you found that video. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that video, Raj, that I I did not. Uh it's it, it's, it's probably one of the probably one of the first kind of iterations of what this is, right? You guys are yeah, having beers just I, I talking about coral. Every Christmas I was in Denver and I'd go see him in Golden mm. and then that one time I early reef builder on youtube days like he took me out fed me a lot of beers and then we went back to the house to talk reef and he's like setting up a tripod i'm like what are you doing he's like yeah we're gonna film this and i'm like oh no 
<laughs> so, he's got an awesome sweater on. I like his sweater. In that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you, you don't remember the dragon face pipe fish comment? Maybe. Uh, Have you had one? No, I never kept one. I kept the, um, oh, what's the one with the blue and yellow? Um, it's got like blue and Jan's pipe fish, I believe. I kept one of those for quite a while on uh, uh, the, what were the red copepods that you can't get so easily anymore? It came in like a frozen stick. Um, uh, do you remember those little red copepods? Uh-uh. Ah, no. shoot, Arctic something. Anyway. Uh, oh, he, those, those, those. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, he, he just ate the hell out of those and uh, survived for two years in a... Uh, I had a cube tank in my office here with uh, seagrass, uh, mangrove, a bunch of calerpa, and then a bunch of softies. And it was the... This was pre-working from home, right? So the tank was very much neglected because there was no reason for me to ever come down here. But it worked because all the macroalgae and plant life sort of just kept it clean. Calinoid? Something the calinus like is what they replaced it with. But Calinoid it was... copepods, Arctic copepods. Yeah, they were like Arctic copepods, and they froze them in like these sticks, and you could just spray, like yeah. scrape off a little bit, and your whole tank would be just red dots everywhere. Um, yeah, I want to try sea grasses, or turtle grass to be specific again. And if anybody knows where I could get um, halophila seagrass, that would be cool too. Um, it's not in the budget right now, but maybe this winter, you know, with some birthday money, I'll buy the tank and oh, set it up. Happen. You've already started the process. You've looked. You scoped things out. That's the problem, right? <laughs> like yeah. Then it starts bubbling <laughs> you in your brain. It. You're good. You're halfway there. You're in that. Uh, I did. There was a comment that I saw. I don't know if it was on a Reef Therapy episode or if it was a Reef Builders video, but someone had said, have you ever seen just a macro algae booth at any of these shows? And I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever seen that. I've seen, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. people bring in ketomorpha or, you know, grassalaria or whatever. Um, maybe every once in a while you'll see like blue hypnea, but that's like as an extra bonus onto whatever coral they're selling. But I think it'd be really cool. There's only a couple different places online that I can think of that just sells macro algae and like weird sponges and things like that. Uh, but that might be a cool. I don't know how. I, I just don't know how well it would do. There was know, a while show. there where, like, uh, remember Dragon's Breath? That yes. came on the yeah. scene, and everybody wanted it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's there. Definitely seems to be a market for it. But it, I, I find. I mean, growing Calerpa is easy. Um, turtle grass, I had mixed results with, but um, some of those red algaes and stuff, I found to be kind of tricky. Like they would eventually get out competed and i was is it tiger boy or tiger boy on instagram yeah, that has Dennis, the, yeah. yeah if i ever see him at a show or something i'd love to pick his brain because i think f- fertilizing and nutrients and all of yeah. that trace elements are, are you know we are all like freaking out about vanadium and icp tests but i i imagine if you're into growing uh macroalgae trace elements really do matter quite a bit yeah. um iron Lots and manganese iron. and all that yeah yep. Yeah, Dennis is awesome. I got a chance to visit his house. I think it's a it's a llama video, but um, I spoke at I forget which uh, which show they have out there, but I spoke at that, and then I I went over to his house to see his his uh, his place. He's got a, just so many cool tanks. It's and it's one of those things where you see all of his tanks online and on Instagram. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just the nature of the freshwater look that the tanks look like they're 50 to 100 gallons, and then you get there, and they're like three. <laughs> <laughs> Three-gallon tanks, four-gallon tanks. Uh, but they just look so good. He's got it down to a science, and, I mean, he's he's one of the best for sure. So he might be fun to have on uh, for a macroalgae episode for sure. Um, yeah. Chelmon, LOL, says, okay, hands down, my favorite episode. Can't get enough live stop livestock topics like these two hours of juicy coral content sheesh this is what you missed last time raj uh with chris meckley yeah, yeah. chris can talk <laughs> 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 i remember at one point in the podcast we were about an hour and a half in and mark goes i think remy's kind of wanting to wrap it up here and then we went for like a half an hour longer <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have man. to catch him like on the few breaths that he takes 
that's where you got to jump in. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, if we ever did one of these trips where we actually did a trip and went to like you know Solomon Islands or something like that, and we were off the grid, we could actually have those conversations for yes. four or five hours because we don't have. There's nothing. Like I have to go to bed right now. I right. have to go to kids' soccer practice or whatever the case may be. There's none of that. You know, you're just out there, just yeah. in it. Uh, let's see here. C. Grassic. C. Grassic says, "I'm definitely in both camps here, collector and grower." As so on the last episode, we talked a lot about how there's a lot of collectors out there, collectoritis and all of that. Uh, they say I have a 75 gallon that has been in place for 19 years. Ooh, I would love There's to see wow. a pic of that. A green bubble in there that I've had for 10. It has been fragged many times, but I've kept all the frags. It is growing across the, the three quarters of the back of three quarters of the tank. Uh, that tank also has a blue ridge in it, which I've had since 2002. Love to see that. Um, it's covering just about everything that the green bubble isn't. On the other hand, I have a second 75 gallon in my dining room, which is chock full of frags. I use that one to supply my students with frags. So this is a, a teacher. Um, but I, can, cool. I, I can relate to that. I mean, I was thinking about our conversation last time and, you know, trying to understand that collectoritis is sort of the name of the game, I think in the mainstream now. And in a way, my, my Petco, you know, 60 gallon breeder is a bit of a collectoritis tank in the sense that I'm not aquascaping it to look like a reef and growing it out to look like a reef. I'm just, it's a specimen tank, right? It's like, oh, here's my collection of gonies. And so I get it. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace it a little more, you know, but I just, I miss the grown out reefs, you know, like where, you know, I mean, I love when somebody posts a pic of a tank that's been up for 10 years or 20 years. Like, that stuff is so cool to see. And every once in a while, you stumble upon one on the web, and it's just fascinating, you know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't know. I feel like there's so many different ways to to go in this hobby. And, you know, Chris is obviously very opinionated when it comes to <laughs> that kind of thing. I'll get, you know, uh, the main I think the main thing I, I came away with amongst other you know, things that we talked about was that he said, show me a, show me a colony tank, show me a tank with grown out corals in it. And, uh, I would love to see that. I would love to see this, this dude's, uh, tank. Well, that's, too. that was, yeah, yeah. The question I had is the corals that were hot a year ago or two years ago, three years ago, you don't see tanks today of people who purchase those corals and those corals have now taken over a quarter of the tank, like that guy talking about his bubble coral, right? Um, you don't see that, so obviously. Yeah, and why is that? Are they are people just f- fragging them to recoup what, their money, or th- we got into it a little bit? I think I think what happens, and you know, I've done the same thing where you buy a Walt Disney acro and it grows, you know, a couple coralites on it, and you start to get some branches, and then you're like, oh, okay, well this. You know, I've seen on XXX website that this the three quarters of an inch branch is worth two hundred dollars. So you're like, well, if I I could take a hundred for this, and it'd be half price, and then I can you know pay for whatever. But I think that that's what's happening is instead of letting these super expensive corals grow out, people just they chop them up so they can start their own little basement business or buy more things or whatever. So that's my guess, at least. Yeah. You see, like, the disc with, like, one bounce mushroom on it, you know? And how awesome it would be to see a rock covered in them, you know? Um, Jawbreakers. There's a few guys out there that have had, you know, a portion of their tank taken over by jawbreakers, and it's stunning. I saw there was some some, uh, really – this is the first time I've ever seen this at a show, but at Aquashella Dallas, there was a vendor that had probably three or four – large rocks with i don't know there had to have been 15 to 20 jawbreakers on each one of these rocks and they wanted a hefty price i think they wanted like three or four thousand dollars for them but that was the first time that i'd ever seen like that many at a show like i've seen them in tanks every you know once in a while you'll see that but that was kind of cool i I, I, that was a little refreshing the price tag wasn't but just seeing (laughs) that was (laughs) you know kind of mushrooms in in a colonial sense um 
uh, Nemato, Nemato Lab, Nemato Lab says, I've heard bad things about Chris through inflammatory forum posts positioning him as a lunatic. <laughs> I'm pleased <laughs> to say that he's my new favorite fish and coral person. Absolutely agree with everything he brought up. I would kill for some oddball corals, but none of the shops around me get uh, any of them in anymore. Uh, you know the name game is bad when all the big vendors are giving names to solitary, non-fraggable LPS like Super Ultra Spider-Man Web Juice Acanthos. <laughs> <laughs> Bumping an already expensive coral to double the price. I'm very excited for spawning efforts to increase. We talked about that a little bit in the last episode as well. It's a blank canvas ready to be filled in. Uh, can't wait to see you guys in Chattanooga. So we'll get to meet him or her. Cool. Awesome. So that's awesome. Yeah. And he can meet Chris. Chris yeah. Is- yeah. Right. <laughs> Here's yeah. the lunatic, Chris. Yes, the <laughs> lunatic will be there in the flesh. Uh, I, I do love picking his brain. It's it's always fun uh, to he, get Chris on the show. He made me rethink things, you know. I mean, uh, I went full calc, and all of a sudden my alkalinity went up to 15 dKH, and I'm texting him like, oh, snap, you know, and he's like, how does everything look? I'm like, great. He's like, cool, leave it alone. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> he's right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know. So yeah. we'll definitely be dosing calc on this new tank. That's for sure. Um, well, speaking yeah. of Chattanooga, uh, tickets are on sale. We'd love to see you there. Reefstock.show. If you want to get those, the link will be in the description of this video. Anything we need to add Raj? I know that we've got some, some fun announcements coming out here in the near future. We do, we do. And so, you know, definitely want people to come up and join us on the, um, at the show, but hop on a reef therapy episode. But there's also going to be an opposing view, or I guess a, a different view from the other 50% where we're putting together an all female cast for oh, cool. reef therapy. So any of the females out there wants to join in and give their point of view on it, come up and join them on their live reef therapy at Restock Chattanooga. Yeah. That's going to be really cool. Um really hoping that Windsor can make it. I'd love to I'd love to hear her take on, you know, just the hobby from her side and I know she's into it too and you know being with mm-hmm. with Jake and you know his his obsessive love for this hobby. I think that'd be really cool to get her opinion. I don't you know, obviously it's so hard to travel with children period it doesn't matter what age they are <laughs> i but, can't imagine what it's like with a two-month-old yeah. <laughs> just gonna um, do it but make I, it happen i feel like we everybody can meet baby reef yeah we we avoided <laughs> traveling with children until they were like a year or two old we so were pansies my, about it <laughs> my wife and kids are debating going and their goal is just to embarrass me constantly so <laughs> they want to wear like they were going to jokingly wear shirts that said, like, wife of Dark Mark and all yes. this stuff, and I'm hoping they don't do that. So. Yeah. It'd be so awesome if they all showed up in, like, goth garb, you know, like, they all, they all look like Wednesday from Adam's family. Yeah. <laughs> we are the family of Dark Mark. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. If you see yeah. them, don't talk to them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> don't want them to, like, make fun of me. <laughs> Yeah, I think the all female podcast is going to be cool. Uh, that's one one cool aspect of the show. Um, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's kind of last minute, but at the same time, like, who cares? You know, it's Labor Day weekend. Stop on out one of the days or two of the days. Pick up some new frags. The video I just released is about how to fly with coral. So if you've never done that before, in a nutshell, it's the easiest thing. I mean, it's going to tack on a few extra minutes to your security checkpoint time, but. I mean, if you're not in a hurry or you factor in for that, I think it was an extra maybe five to 10 minutes where they had to, you know, swab it and, you know, test the water and all that stuff. But I think they make it so easy. So these, these containers that they have, I mean, you're not going to be able to fit anything massive in here, but honestly, you're probably not going to find anything massive at a frag Mm. show anyway. Um, But these are, I mean, I just unscrewed the cap of this and boom, they test it and you're good to go. So if you're flying in, you can still take coral home. So. Yeah, oh, and the guy behind flying. that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, was, I forgot about a promotion, but well, if you're coming up to Reefstock, um, we are doing a big promo where you 
uh, it's a big raffle deal. Um, all expense trip for two to New York. It's flights, hotel, uh, to go check out, do a private tour of Polo Reef, which is the, I mean, everybody knows that, the big, big reef tank up in Long Island. Um, Do a full tour, private dinner uh, with Andrew Chef uh, at the helm with Andrew and his wife. And that's, I've been to, I've been there and spent a lot of time with that aquarium and it, it it's truly is amazing. So that if you've ever wanted to come check it out, uh, now's your chance. That's an opportunity and it's going to be fully paid for, for you and the guest. Um, that's, that's a no brainer. Come do it. Yeah. Yeah. The details for that will be coming out here soon, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, to meet this portion of the country because I feel like you know we've been to Dallas, we've been to Orlando, we've been to all the things, right? But uh, Chattanooga, the Atlanta area, will be a lot of fun. So, uh, anything else you guys want to add before we hop off tonight? I think I'm all right. Good. All right, I need to go get you Raj, some rest. You made it. <laughs> I made it. Well, you were coherent like 88 percent of the time. So yeah. it was great. <laughs> my, my, I could I could feel it in my brain. My eyes kind of gave out a couple of times, and sort of feeling it right there. Yep. Uh, well, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments section below, whether that be for me or Mark or Raj. Uh, if you're listening to the audio only version, hit us up on the Roof Builder socials, and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you. Bye bye. See you. Bye.